I have a few questions for you. Okay. Um, so the first one is, so the long story tells the story of July. Um, and I know you play July. Old July, yeah. Um, at some point in the play as well. So July is a Jamaican slave who lives through the last days of slavery. How has July's character impacted you? Um, as a person or as an actress? I mm, mean, good question. Very July's good. character is, is uh, for me, a whole coming together of every black character that I probably played. And as a woman and as a black woman, it speaks to me of the resilience that black women just have in general, mm -hmm. period. So old July story is sort of foundation. It's kind of like, well, this is kind of where it all starts. This is where it comes from, that, that will to survive um, that we've seen in black women, you know, for centuries and generations. So um, her struggle is nothing new. Mm -hmm. but the beauty with which it's written and the depth of which it's written is something that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you if I get asked to play a black character, they always want her to be feisty, but they never give any reason why. Oh, no, you know, she's just a no-nonsense person, and they try to sell it to you like that, but they don't give you the body of work that reflects her, her, that person's humanity or make her a three-dimensional character. And with Old July, you get to see the origins. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's what the audience buy into. I mean, my character narrates the whole play, but we do it in, in flashbacks. So she's reliving memories, but we get to see the origins of how you come to be and how you survive um, through a really terrible time mm -hmm. you know, and, and strength of character for that, yeah. Nice. And um, obviously, I know I haven't seen the long song, but I do know it's a novel. Um, it's also been on TV as well, and it's a play or a TV series. Mm. Why do you think the story is so popular? And do you think it is important for audiences to learn about the history of slavery in Jamaica more than ever? Have you not read the book? Have you seen <laughs> the play? This is not going good for an interview. You'd at least need to see at least see the adaptation or read and the now, book. I, you know what? After this, is I'm going to... Yeah, you need to sort that one out. Sure. Yeah. Um, I but I must admit, I, I hadn't read the book um, until... Uh, and I didn't get to see uh, all of the adaptation. I may have seen an episode. I didn't see all of it. So um, I was still approaching the work like, as a newbie. But halfway through rehearsals, I did listen to the audio book of the long song where Andrew was actually reading it. So it was beautiful oh. to hear the author's words yeah. in her own words. Yeah. Um, and that really helped me place the character. I think the book is popular because it highlights the British involvement mm -hmm. in the slave trade and the Caribbean. We're very used to knowing about the African-Americans, but not, not much is said about the Caribbean mm -hmm. and Britain's heavy involvement in the Caribbean and their heavy involvement in the slave trade. You know, all the companies, the, the, the wealth that's been made on the backs of slavery mm -hmm. through Barclays, through Tate and Lyle, you know, cities that were built in, in the UK based on slavery, Bristol, Cardiff, these are all sort of like slave ports. So it's um, important and it's probably popular because maybe um, the way that it's written, it is so uh, beautiful and humorous and I think, Trevor Laird, who's in the company, had likened it to Dickens. Mm. So it's very poetic and, and very descriptive and, and it still packs a punch. So it's easy to read and imagine because it's so fluid. And I think for the uh, intelligentsia, they can appreciate the quality of the writing. And I suppose for 
the, the average man, it's a story, average man, woman, it's a story that hasn't been told yeah. and not in this way. So yeah. it makes it very unique. Yeah. Very unique. I agree. I was I read this post the other day, which was um because I was talking to someone that I work with about like black history and how because we're in black history month now and how important it is that people are, you know, are informed about black history. But I always say that slavery is white history, but black history is how we survived it. Mm. Um, so I always think that it's really important. Like, it's, yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. But I think with the long song, as Andrew's always said, it's not a story about slavery. Yeah. It's a story set in mm -hmm. the times of slavery. So it's it, slavery is the backdrop. Yeah. And we do see the the cruelty of the system but it's a story set within that system. So what you do get is a bunch of characters who are three dimensional and we don't see them oppressed every minute because mm -hmm. it's not about that. It is about how they, how they survive. It's about the jokes, the jealousy. It's mm -hmm. about all of that because they were human beings. So we get to see that the humanness of the people that were dehumanized and we see their humanness within the great house where they are servants and slaves to these British uh, people. Yeah, yeah, no, which it's interesting. I think I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to opt for the audio book because- oh, It's beautiful. Especially it's beautiful. since you said, yeah, because I would love to hear it, especially from the writer. You always can hear the passion, you know, when someone's wrote something and then they have an audio, but you can just hear the love Yes, and she's cheeky. I mean, Andrew's cheeky. Old July is cheeky. There's some, you'd be amazed. I think the most surprising thing about the production is the amount of comedy that there mm -hmm. is. And, you know, who thought that you yeah. could find humour in these situations? But it is the humour of the, the characters and how they communicate to each other and how they view the their masters or whatever so it is it's a real something really new and yeah. seeing audiences laugh and giving them permission to to mm. laugh it's mm. because they've connected with the characters and we've we've made them human so they kind of they know that they're slaves but that's not at the forefront they're just really looking at these characters and how they're going to get through this situation based on their personalities and things like that so that's that's something very new. Yeah, it's really different because usually you're you're right. Usually when we when I watch any kind of play that has any kind of slavery themes to it, it tends to be very much very depressing and no, in no is, way would I laugh. Is, no, no, this this the, the long song as as it's been adapted by Swahela is not depressing. It's um of course. There are moments of violence mm. in it. There are moments where you do gasp, but there are moments where you genuinely laugh. And that mixture, and by the end, it's very thought provoking, but it's life affirming. Mm. It is very, you come out of there feeling somehow feeling good or feeling glad you, you feel changed in some yeah, sort of yeah. way, but you're not coming out. I mean, a few people have come out and said, oh, I feel terribly guilty. That's <laughs> not, just, you know, that's not, in, that's not really helpful, but mm -hmm. you know, it's good that you've been able to shift a viewpoint or yeah. open a viewpoint yeah. to facilitate a discussion um, where people have been able, audiences have been able to see it from for a completely different lens. Yeah, and it's not over the top, and it's not we're here to to make you feel guilty and realize, and it's just we're people. Mm -hmm. Look at these mm -hmm. people, and you mm -hmm. fall in love with the people. So therefore, you you feel outraged that they're in yeah the situation in the system, and you can see mm -hmm. how wrong the system is based on the impact that it has on these these lovely people trying to to get by. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not depressing but it will take you through highs and lows. Um, the slavery element will come in or not slavery attitudes mm. 
more than slavery itself, but the, the attitudes that are held by the British or were held by the British during this period, those attitudes come out. So it is quite shocking because there is a lot of racially sensitive language, which I don't think you can get away from. No. Um, I mean, we don't go crazy with it like Quentin Tarantino for the sake <laughs> of it. It is yeah. in context and it is in context of the time. And yeah. I think that can be quite shocking for theatre audiences. Yeah. We accept it in cinema and film, but uh, to hear that language on stage is, is quite a bold move. Yeah. Um, but it's in context and rightly so, it should be there. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's probably the most shocking thing, thinking, because I'm hearing this and I'm having to accept it. I can't just jump up and say, object. Yeah. Real. So um, yeah, it's, it's not depressing at all, at all, no. Which is good. I, that makes it even more kind of, I think for anyone that wants to watch, it'll be even more exciting because at least then you get to see a story being told from a, a story that you think you're going to hear will be very different to what you would have it expected, which yeah. is, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, this question is just about you in general. So um, you have a very large portfolio. So when I grew up, I remember watching um, Real McCoy. So that's how I know about you. Um, mm -hmm. And you've also done, you know, hard hitting small acts as well as my niece's favorite Jojo and Graham. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she absolutely, you know, when I first, when the show first came on, I was like, this is it now. Cause I always kept saying, we need to have a show that is for, for everyone, obviously, but it's so nice to have a Caribbean yeah. cartoon character. Cause the only other one that I remember was Rusty Mouse. Mm. Um, this is the first, uh, Jojo and Grand Grand, as I believe is the first yeah. ever black family animation um, yeah. on the uh, BBC or yeah, yeah so yeah. it was the first and and also the the fact that it's not a Jamaican family is even mm -hmm. nicer mm -hmm. to show that there is diversity even within the islands and it's yeah true. I love it I love doing that job I love it yeah it's such a lovely um show I was going to ask you out of all of the characters you've played throughout your <laughs> <laughs> my eyes open wide <laughs> I know this is like there's, it's, there's so many I thought this is a tough one but you're going back 35 years if you can, if you it's been to... around a while you know you can't ask me what's my favourite character in all 35 years um, yeah is that's what you're going to ask me isn't it if you had to if someone said to you you have to do one character for a whole I don't know let's just say for three months just doing as many things with that character then which one do you think would be your oh that's I know. it would be between uh Steve McQueen's Aunt Betty and Small Axe mm -hmm. uh, which for me for is a culmination of every black female character that I've ever played and written for myself and I do see that as a huge homage to to my parents generation and I can't and the other one would be um well my character doesn't have a name but jennifer saunders nemesis in ab fab oh, yeah, that always yeah. turns up to yeah. torment her and and that. so yeah it's really it's it's so difficult because i've done so many things and i love great grand grand and i could twittle away as her all day it's 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 a tough one but um i think different characters have different meanings to me yeah. So, yeah, different stages in your life and different resonate differently. Uh, like for Ab Fab, that was the first time I was truly respected in the mainstream for doing what I, I do. And that being seen as an art comedy, not just being black and funny, but working it. And for Steve McQueen, that was just a, a privilege to play, again, another British story based on truth and mm -hmm. based on, again, the strength and the fire that, mm -hmm. that, that black women had in the 60s and, and just being able to pay my respects to that. So it's it's difficult, but I think those I two have different meanings for me. 
Well, they both, I've seen you in both of those two. And it's uh, good to be honest with you. I thought you did amazing in Small Acts. I thought that whole, that whole, um, the whole, uh, I'll say even the whole kind of like, because there were so many different stories for different yeah. like, episodes, but that one in particular, there was, for me, that was my favorite. Mm. Um, but in general, I just think, it changed what well, I hope it did. I hope it changed the way people saw black British communities in general, other than I Well, I don't remember. know. We, I think it educated mm-hmm. probably a lot of people yeah. who, who didn't know that this happened. Um, mm-hmm. And it also, uh, what's the word? It also sort of justified and uh, yeah, confirmed to a lot of people who lived through those times. It validated a lot mm-hmm. of people who who grew up, who were my age or just a little bit older, who were around that area at that yeah. time and mm-hmm. knew and knew about the mangrove club and mm-hmm. things like that. So they. They, Steve was beautifully let them know, you know, you're not forgotten. Yeah, yeah And so yeah. people watched it and they had a lot of reminiscence of like, yeah, I remember as well as, yeah, that did happen and, and I bet you didn't know about it. So yeah. it validated as well as educated. It was a beautiful piece of work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When it came out, I remember everyone just, you, it was, everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is, I remember, I because I, at first I didn't realise I didn't know about it until someone was like, Chris, you need to watch this now. And when I watched it, I was like, why, why did it take me so long to even, you know, sometimes you're, you don't always find out about things until people talk about it. Oh, well, you do, well, you don't hear about it until people are brave enough um, and feel compelled enough, like Steve, to tell mm-hmm. a story yeah. that's not American centric, mm-hmm. that's not just one island centric yeah. here Africa or, or the Caribbean but to stand in what he knows of Britishness and being black yeah you know the fact that it was even a, he was able to make it is is amazing and I think mm-hmm. that's why everybody was just like what a story about us mm-hmm. just us how we are just being just mm-hmm. being not stereotypes being yeah. and that's why it was so special I think everybody flocked home to sit down and watch ourselves being reflected with affection. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the main thing. And that's why I always say, even about the real McCoy, people say, oh, why was it so good and or why popular? It's because we liked, generally, we liked who we are. Yeah. And so yeah. we approach the work with a sense of love mm. and playfulness. And it wasn't just caricature for caricature's sake yeah, yeah we knew those characters we could play them you you when you've got a love for the material or an affinity at least with the material that will always come through on the screen yeah it's so true I think that's what it is because for me I love watching stories that tell just about us and our everyday lives how we live just the things that we do rather than it's always I always think that black stories should always be told by black people to be honest because then you get the true representation yeah and I mean I suppose there have been stories by non-black people that have been okay but if a non a non-black person is going to tell a black story they got to respect it they yeah. can't just be base it on research and think just because they've researched it that whatever they've researched is absolutely fact for everyone, because we're not one homogenous group of Mm -hmm. people. Um, And they have to have, I think, an affinity, because there's a certain arrogance in trying to tell black stories that because you've researched it, somehow you you are now the font of all (laughs) black knowledge, even when black actors might come and say to you, actually, that's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, you still Mm -hmm. got to stay open to it and you have to have an affinity or at least a love for the the subject matter, or just leave it alone. Let us do it, because we can do it a hundred times better. With a bit more heart. Yeah, Um, I agree. I totally agree with you. Um, So just another thing about you is that you are, well, I always had known you as, apart from 
obviously from um, Small Axe, but prior to this, I, I think you're very well known as being a, com a comedian um, and you're great at it. Would you, um, I was gonna ask you what attracted you to this play? I, now I understand that it has got funny sides to it and it's got so much more than I realized initially, but what was your main kind of attraction to play um, July? Well, firstly, I would say I'm a comedic actress. Mm -hmm. I never set out to do comedy. I always just wanted to be an actress um, and mainly of drama. Mm -hmm. but comedy found me <laughs> and that's what I'm known for. Um, and with comedy, it's about timing. Yeah more than it is a comedy acting is about timing um and with this play being the narrator the the humor again comes out of the timing of how she says lines and when she says them so that that tickled me when I read the script I was like oh no that's a bit funny you know <laughs> there was this, you know knowing that there was that 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 leeway to, yeah. to have some fun but um, if there was no comedy in, if there were no light moments, as let's say, in it, I still would have done it. And, mm -hmm. and I would have been really um, happy to do it because I wanted to do drama. And yeah. I want people to know that I can do drama. Um, you know, I'm not a one trick pony and comedy wasn't, was never the game plan, yeah. but it has been wonderful to me. So it's been nice to do something that is definitely a split down the middle. You mm -hmm. get a bit of cheeky laughter and then you get some very big moments of gravitas yeah yeah I would have done it anyway nice um and what message would you like your audience to take away from watching this play whether it's um black or just non-black audience members I just want them to come I think it's such this unfortunately Andrea didn't live long enough to see this adaptation um, as she was around, I guess, for the, the rehearsals and stuff for the, the television for Small Island and stuff, but she didn't get to see this. And she, she is an author that we should be really proud of and interested in, because like Steve, she's telling it from a real, personal place that we can all identify with it so I really believe that it's a work that needs to be seen because it is definitely unique and what and I always before I go on stage I just pray that every member of the audience will be touched and changed so I that's my my goal is for people to go away more more sensitive and and changed to think I didn't know that wow that's that's I think that's what that I would want every audience to just know that there's so much more that they yeah. didn't know that they now know I, that would be my wish nice I think that's I always think that with theatre I like watching plays that leave me or leave the audience feeling impacted because it's, it's always fun, it's always fun to watch like, you know, something that is just, you know, light on the mind. But when, if a play can shift your thoughts, then yeah. the place that then everyone's done a great job because... Yeah, that, that's it. I think this art is about, and especially the theatre, is to make people feel something. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point? Exactly. And, and I found, and what I've been finding with this by the end of it, which is my, my closing speech, it does end with people going, hmm. Mm. And that's a nice sound to me, because that, mm. that means, right, they've gone away thinking. But as mm. the lights go down, you hear a lot of people go, hmm. Mm. Because they're thinking, and, and mm. we know that it's had an impact, and I think that's, that's a nice sound. Yeah, definitely. That's the sound you want to hear, which yeah. is really nice. Um, if you could summarise the play in one word, what would it be? One word. <laughs> Engaging. Okay, nice. 
engaging, I think. Yeah, because no, that's a good one. Yeah, because it forces you to be drawn in. Mm. You don't sit, you don't sit and watch. You are literally drawn into the story, and it's very personal. And I think Old July, my character speaks to every single person in the audience who's telling a story, so they do feel involved. So it's a very engaging piece. Yeah, that's no that's good I love plays that are engaging because you don't want to be because you then feel like you're on the journey with the characters oh this one you're definitely on on the journey every step of the way and uh all the rest of the wonderful cast bring to life certain aspects of the story but then you've also got old July weaving along giving her opinion on what's gone on and moving it on so you're definitely definitely involved it's a very personal story that everybody feels invested in they want to know what's going to happen what's old July going to say about that what's going to happen next so I'm their guide throughout throughout the whole narrative which is which is a a privilege really yeah no that's really good and my final question for you is what is next for you (laughs) I don't even know if I'm allowed to say but I do have another theatre project coming up. Oh, okay, nice. In March. It's a bit of a yeah, way nice. away. Um, as far as I know, that's the next. But obviously, in between all of that, we'll be doing more JoJo's and Grand Grand. So, nice. um, yeah, I'm lucky enough now to have done two theatre jobs. So the next one will be a hat trick, which is really great. Because ah, that's yeah. a change from television. And it's, a, you know, it's... Um, down there touchy feely with the audience and yeah. live. so yeah my next one I have another theatre job lined up um and that's about as far as much as I can tell you for the moment <laughs> no that's exciting thank you so much You're I welcome. am gonna uh, now you've told me so much about this story, the whole play and everything it's got me very much like one I'm gonna go on audiobook yeah, you have I do, to come and see it. I do love, and I'm definitely going to try and get a chance to come and see it, because you're right, it finishes quite soon. We finish on the 23rd, so we have all of this week, and then we have a couple of days off, and then we do, next week, we do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So you haven't got long, but we do matinees. Yeah. So we do a matinee on a Wednesday at 2.30, and also on a Saturday. And it's yeah. not a long-winded play. The first, the first half is about 50 minutes and oh. the second half is just about an hour. So it's about an hour and 40, 40 minutes, 49 minutes, something just under two hours, just about two hours with that an is, interval. Yeah. So it moves swiftly along and yeah. we do pack in a lot of history in, okay. in, in that as a backdrop. And if depending on where you live, it's not that far out of London. Yeah, because I was looking at the... Um... It on because because when I first was looking at where it was and stuff like that I was thinking oh okay interesting because if anything's really really far then I know I can't because I yeah. live in London it's just but... along from Brighton yeah, there's yeah. a train station that you know if you're south of the river you could do it in an hour and 30 minutes yeah you know yeah, yeah. there's trains that come straight in Victoria so I don't think that's another thing black audiences need to to travel we're a bit lazy we want it on our doorstep. <laughs> we really are our doorstep. if it's not right in front of us on the television we don't want to know. forget it it's like people say oh i haven't seen you are you still on the telly it's like oh, yeah i do other things do you listen to radio because i might be on the radio <laughs> or i might be on a children's channel it's like, it's like you can't spoon feed you know people mm-hmm. they have to they have to travel to see yeah. and otherwise people become experts in mm. our experience where yeah. we should be the experts by going and see and, and, and inform ourselves to, to things going on, especially when they're representing or telling a part of our history. So, yeah. you know, we must make the effort and stories like this, you know, is what you should bring your family to. Young yeah. people do, you know, yeah. stuff we don't know when we'll get to see again. You're so, you're so right. You're so, cause I'm, I have some guilty of I'll see a plane I'll be like really want to see it it's in Birmingham maybe I won't it's, it's so silly because it's a train it's a train ride away and and sometimes we need, we need to sit at the moment we know we're playing to 99.9 percent white audiences mm. and this is a heavy story and the beauty of it is and the surprise of it is that 
they've been really getting it. They've been really jumping to their feet in applause afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's that's nice, but also, you know, a more diverse audience should see this because they're missing out on something that's yeah. really quite special. Yeah. Exactly that. Exactly that. Because we're missing out on our story, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, I'll definitely be pushing everybody I know to take a trip. Because, yeah, we should. We should. You can't, you can't wait for it to come to London. You can't wait for it. And when it's gone, it's gone. And then you're like, oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> it's, not it's not good enough. We can't keep. No, keep it's it's we true. Keep it's true. Alive like that, you know. I agree, I agree with you. We we'll wait, we wait for it to go on even worse than that. We wait for it to go on, you know, like the digital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say grab it while it's hot. Yeah, it, it's hot now, so people should come and see it. Definitely. Thank you so, so much. You're most Thank welcome. you. It was lovely speaking to you.